Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at one of the most important differentiation rules in all of calculus, the derivative of e to the x. Now, we need to point out the difference between a power function and an exponential function. There's a very common mistake, which I want to make sure you're aware of. So first, what we're calling a power function, it's a variable, typically x, raised to a number, like x squared, x cubed. Those are power functions. Now, what we're calling or defining as an exponential function, we flip that, and we now have a number raised to a variable. And the exponential function that you'll be using all over the place in Calculus 1 has the base of the exponential function as e. And e is Euler's number. It's approximately 2.72 and there is a limit definition for that. All right, so again, let's make sure you realize a power function, x raised to a number, exponential function, a number raised to the x power, like e raised to the x. Now with that in mind, let's mention a very common mistake before we state the correct answer for the derivative of e to the x. Well, these look, kind of similar, at least symbolically, you have bases and exponents. What does the power rule say? Well, if we have a power of x, the power rule says we bring the power n down and then subtract one from the exponent. All right, that is correct here because x to the n is a power function, so we can apply the power rule to it. However, e to the x, that is not a power function. And be careful, the common mistake, which I see even my best calculus students make this mistake, is they mistakenly apply the power rule to differentiating e to the x. And what that would look like here is bringing the power down, x, and then subtracting one from the exponent. And that is not right because e to the x is not a power function, it's an exponential function. So we need a new rule for differentiating exponential functions. All right, so again, this is one of the most common mistakes. What is the correct answer for the derivative of e to the x? Well, it's really simple and it's kind of mind blowing. The derivative of e to the x is itself e to the x. So this exponential function e to the x is its own derivative. And there's a lot of consequences for that throughout the sciences and engineering. All right, now it's one thing just to have that stated to you, but is that really true? How do we know that's actually true? Well, we can go ahead and apply the limit definition. And that is why you spent time on the limit definition in your Calculus 1 course. You're not going to use it often, but we will here to prove or see this result. So let's go through that right now. I'm going to call my function f of x e to the x. So let's write f of x as the function that we want to differentiate e to the x, and we're going to apply the limit definition to calculate the derivative f prime. All right, so we have that a limit as h goes to zero, and then the usual parts, we're going to plug in x plus h to our function here. Notice x plus h, the input, is up in the exponent. So we're going to get e raised to the x plus h power. And then we subtract the original function, f of x, we subtract e to the x. All right, that's all over h. And now we're gonna use a basic exponent rule backwards. The rule that we're going to use, it's a to the m times a to the n when you multiply the same bases, you can add their exponents. And that rule would look like now on the other side, a raised to the m 
plus n power. Well, we're just going to apply that backwards here. We have addition in this exponent. So let me write this as on the right side here, e to the x plus h. And we can split that addition in the exponent apart into multiplying bases to different powers. We can write this on the left side as e to the x times e to the h. All right, so let me go ahead and replace that here. If you don't care about these steps, just go ahead and skip to the next few minutes. And in the second part, we'll have some problems. But let's go ahead and finish this because I think this is important. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite e to the x plus h as e to the x times e to the h. So we have a limit as h goes to zero. And we're writing that now as e to the x times e to the h minus e to the x all over h. All right. Our goal is to simplify this to get rid of the indeterminate form. Notice if you just plug in h as zero, you're going to get e to the x minus e to the x zero over zero. So we need to simplify this algebraically a little bit further. All right, notice here I can factor e to the x out from the numerator. So we're going to write that as e to the x being factored out times now in parentheses e to the h minus 1. All right, and we're going to point out something here. We have two variables. We have the variable x, but more importantly, here for your limit, the variable for calculating this limit is h. Despite thinking usually of x as a variable, in this calculation, x is a constant, or x is held to be fixed. It's not changing. It's only h that is changing. In other words, here, e to the x is a constant, and I can pull it out front of the limit. So we're going to simplify this. I'm going to pull the constant e to the x out front, because here, h is the variable, because h is approaching 0. And now that's going to multiply the limit as h goes to 0 of the expression e to the h minus 1 divided by h. All right, now here, probably easiest to see this just with some numerical calculations. Plug in some values as h is getting closer and closer to 0. And it's not hard to see numerically that that limit with respect to h approaching 0 is going to be 1. Now, that's not a complete proof, but I'm going to have linked in the description down below another video where we'll go through that in more detail. But that suffices for right now. We get here as our derivative of e to the x, e to the x times 1. Which is e to the x. And that is why the derivative of e to the x is e to the x because of the limit definition. And here you thought that was useless. We use the limit definition of the derivative to turn that into more efficient tools for calculating derivatives. Now, with that out of the way, the derivative of e to the x being itself e to the x, let's go ahead and get to some examples. Next up, we're going to take a look at three examples, one of which, example three, is one of my personal favorites. Now, first, we have to be comfortable with our basic differentiation rules. Here, we have the derivative of e to the x as e to the x, and be comfortable writing that with a different variable, typically t. So the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. Just change the variable here from x to t, and you have the derivative of the exponential function as itself, whatever variable you're using. All right, now if we combine this with the previous differentiation rules, we're going to be able to differentiate slowly and slowly more complicated functions. Like here, for the first example, this is a combination of an exponential function and a polynomial. We just apply all of the other differentiation rules, same as before. So if our function here is called y, 
We're going to call the derivative y prime, and we're going to calculate the derivative term by term because we're adding and subtracting the constant 2 multiplying e to the x. That's just a constant multiple. And if we differentiate e to the x, that's itself. So we get for this first term the derivative 2 times e to the x, and we differentiate term by term the same way. I'm going to write this work out. We have the coefficient 5, and then we differentiate now x cubed, so 3x squared, and then minus the coefficient 2 times the derivative of x, which is 1. You're probably comfortable combining the multiplications and simplifications there all together, but we're going to start doing that in future videos. All right, and here you can just simplify this as 2e to the x plus 15x squared minus 2. And that's your derivative. All right, the next one, we're just going to get comfortable using t as the variable, and it differentiates pretty much the same way. So if our function is f of t, the derivative f prime, just go ahead and differentiate term by term. The derivative of t squared with the power rule, that's going to come out to 2t. But now when we differentiate the exponential function, be careful, we're not applying the power rule because e to the t is not a power function. The derivative of e to the t, the exponential function, is itself. And that's it for example two. All right, so make sure you can distinguish between power functions and exponential functions because you're going to need that in my personal favorite example here. Now, I always like to throw this in in my Calculus 1 course just to make sure students are on top of their stuff. All right, now be careful here. Make sure you can identify correctly what each of these three terms are. All right, do you see it? Here we have x raised to a number, the first term, x to the e. That's a power or a power function. The middle term, e to the x, that's an exponential function. But what about the last term, e to the pi? Be careful, that's a constant function. So we have e, a constant, raised to pi, another constant. While I have no idea what e to the pi is, I know it comes out to some number, which is a constant. So here, your last term is neither a power function or an exponential function. It's just some number, a constant. And now if we differentiate term by term, we'll get the derivative y prime. We apply the power rule to differentiate x to the e. So bring your power e down, subtract one from the exponent. All right, next we differentiate the exponential function e to the x, which differentiates to itself. So we get plus e to the x. And your last term e to the pi that's a constant. The derivative of any constant is zero. And if you just simplify that, you don't need the plus zero. We'll write that as e times x to the e minus one plus e to the x. All right, and again, just make sure you understand each of these three terms and why they all have different derivatives because we differentiate power functions using the power rule the derivative of an exponential function is itself, and the derivative of a constant is zero. Now, these are all simple examples, but again, make sure you understand these thoroughly, these simple examples, before you start to move on to problems involving the product rule and the quotient rule. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.